Hi Year 10s and welcome to the first assembly of your final half term of being a Year 10 student at Arc Putney Academy. To begin with, uh, we didn't have any entries for the quiz before half term and I'm assuming that's because we had the half term break. So I will keep this quiz again for the following week. Can you guess the pixelated cartoon and film characters? A reminder, there is an Amazon voucher up for grabs. Today, rather than having our normal book review, I'm going to go straight in and focus on value four, which is a sense of self-awareness combined with the integrity to be compassionate towards others. Now, you might think your screen has gone wrong, but this would have been a very familiar site for quite a lot of you yesterday. Um, those of you who are unaware why, um, please watch the following video. The scenes in the video and the concept of what is currently going on can be really difficult to understand. And there are kind of three main responses um, that I've experienced um, in people kind of trying to distance themselves in what's going on. The first one is the statement that it's just people causing trouble. And although there are obviously people taking advantage of the unrest, what the media often fails to show is the vast majority of the protest is peaceful. Um, there is also a lot of help and support going into cleaning up the mess that often isn't even caused by the protesters. Um, and they are uniting, particularly in Minneapolis, where there's a lot of unrest, to tidy up the neighbourhoods. Another statement is that police brutality isn't a problem in the UK, so why should we care? Um, and I just wanted to bring to your attention a couple of names over the years. For example, Mark Duggan is a name you're probably familiar with, um, who was shot in Tottenham in 2011 and was the impetus for the riots that took place that summer. Um, Dalian Atkinson, who was a footballer um, who died after being restrained and tasered by police in Shropshire. Sean Clark, who was only 20 years old when he died in hospital after his airways were obstructed by police in 2017. And Shekin Bayou, who died in police custody in Scotland in 2015. There are also loads of headlines at the moment that also bring this all to a real sharp focus. For example, um, black people are 40 times more likely to be stopped and searched in the UK. London protest organiser, um, this was published yesterday 
and says that police brutality is more deadly than coronavirus right now in the UK. And also this one, which again is another recent one, um, that people from black and ethnic minority um, backgrounds are more likely to be fined than the white population under coronavirus laws. And when I looked into it further, it's actually 54% more likely. And all of those gathered together to paint a picture that there is an underlying problem in society that we must do more to address and confront when we see it. The final unhelpful statement is this one, all lives matter. Now, it's a very controversial statement because it's often well intentioned, um, but it really doesn't help in kind of raising awareness and focus on marginalised groups. The easiest way I can explain why it's unhelpful is to imagine two houses standing side by side and one house is on fire. Now, if I'm standing in front of the fire and I say all houses matter, well, yeah, they do, but the focus currently needs to be on the house that's currently burning. And in this current situation, the focus needs to be on the fact that around the world go globally, black lives are not treated fairly. And obviously there are other marginalised groups that also need awareness, but in the current climate, that's where our focus is. Now, this is not an assembly where I'm now expecting you guys to all jump up and go and start protesting or to donate your spending money to some of the organisations and charities supporting the protests. But there are things we can do in our everyday lives, not only to support people of colour, but also other marginalised groups that are discriminated against on a daily basis. The first is to recognise any barriers to success. And that's a hard one because it's having the time and the space to think about situations where you potentially are able to do something that someone else is unable to do through no fault of their own. Equally, listening and amplifying their voices, taking the time to understand where they're coming from and allowing that space for them to be heard. Being actively anti rather than just not, and what I mean by that, it's very easy to say that you are not racist or that you are not sexist, but actively being anti-racist or anti-sexist, for example, takes more courage and more effort. And it's linked to this idea of confronting the injustice, even when it's uncomfortable to do so. So even when you're maybe the only voice speaking up or the only voice to point something out, making sure that it is clear that what you are seeing, what you are witnessing is unacceptable. The final one is important and it's being open to learn. And whether you are someone that learns through reading and wants to read books on it or articles on other marginalised groups or if you prefer to see like there are loads of things to watch on YouTube just to learn a bit more not only about the Black Lives Matter movement but also about other marginalised groups. To end today I just wanted to share this quote from Martin Luther King which says our lives begin to end the day we become silent about things that matter. As I keep saying to you guys, you are day by day becoming older and hopefully wiser and your voices are even more powerful. Make sure you are using your platform, your voice, your space to be advocates for change and for doing better and for kindness rather than staying silent about those really crucial things that matter. It's always lovely to hear what you guys are getting up to at home and um, particularly over the long half term break. And it was so nice to receive lots of emails um, about how restful and peaceful your half term break has seemed to have been. It was also nice to get these stunning photos from Kynat, who again has been out with her camera over the break. As always, if you have anything you want to share, feel free to drop me an email and I'll share it in next week's assembly. I'm going to jump straight to sharing our two winners of the Amazon Valley. What was really nice is we had 22 people in that last week of half term submit all of their work. And it looks like our first voucher winner is Alana. Well done, Alana. Check your email. A voucher will be on its way. Having a look for our second winner. That looks like. Taya, congratulations Taya, check your email for an Amazon voucher. Now the reason why 
I delayed doing the shout outs is because I want to do a special shout out today to Kyle, Melania, Angelina, Jovana, Sade and Lubna who submitted every single piece of work over summer one. So there is a special bonus voucher on its way to you. Check your emails, please. Final reminders I have. First one, there's a virtual Urban Scholars on Saturday the 13th of June. Um, Urban Scholars, please check your emails for your invitation. It'd be great to see lots of you attending. Yovana, Lubna, Maliha and Afia, um, a reminder that you've got your Science and Engineering Online Saturday Club this week. And finally, I know lots of you have lots of questions about returning to school plans. There was an email that was sent to your parents yesterday, so please ask them to check that email. And then please feel free to contact either myself or your tutors if you have any additional questions at the moment. Obviously, as I'm sure you can understand, everything changes daily. So the plans are relatively flexible, but please make sure your parents are checking their email so that they are up to date with what's happening at school at the moment. As always, stay safe, stay healthy and stay kind.